to me, I'm just curious if he's actually able to navigate the lane phase against someone who's as experienced as Levitate, who has a uh, better lane knowledge than he probably does. And if he does, I expect him to do well in team fights because that's that's kind of how you climb into the queue is is from being that huge team fight menace for an ADC. Yeah, yeah, perfect. You answered exactly what I was going to ask. That, <laughs> pretty much going to say, like, looking at a player coming from solo queue, how do you look towards games like this? Yeah. And, yeah, I'm really curious to see how they're going to stack up. Like, this is a very tough matchup. The first game that they have, they're going up against Levitate, someone that we have seen tested themselves throughout 2023. And here in 2024 is still looking to push the envelope, get into uh, the ch uh, Challengers League themselves. So I want to see how Thomas and Abi will uh, play up against Levitate and Muzi. But... We got to look at other lanes as well as oh another draven ban yes this time it's that tom it's that i will say i whenever you have a draven player if you're not banning draven you, it's you're you're pretty much just sacrificing the bot lane yeah especially i feel like if you're coming in from solo queue uh if that is sort of your most played champion you definitely need to ban that because that's one of the champions yeah. where in the 2v2 matchup you probably really know your matchups and there's not a lot of bad matchups for draven in that lane i'm curious to see if we see the talon ban though because again we mentioned recent is on the other side this time on Let's blackbeard's see. team he might know how to just deal with soul talon is a very punishable jungle in the early game if you can find him ah yeah. uh who's gonna ban <laughs> i was hoping that yujin would like let him have yeah. it i'm gonna beat it i was really hoping that he tried to eagle it and we'd get the well, talent they, they already banned his fiora like you can yeah. ban fiora and then be like all right you can yeah. have talent it's true yeah. fair they, they left him as gwen they left him as gwen you, but that, not yet still there's still one more ban there's still one more ban <laughs> we'll see oh it's gonna be olaf actually so Gwen is available for Yushin, but then there are other picks that we have been seeing banned away. The Skarner is something that they can grab for themselves here that uh, like it has that flexibility between Yushin and between uh, Shimmer. We've already seen that that could be really strong. Varus is open, Jinx is open. So there are these powerful picks that you could still grab here. Orianna, another one that just kind of tossing out some names here. Yeah, or the Ari v uh, Vi combo, right? Looked for Titan last time, though it was with Shimmer in that situation, this time with Soul. Uh, I mean, Soul can also pick a whole bunch of other champions who can pair really, really well with Vi. So the Ari, nope, we got debated. Never talk about Harvest. It's the Jinx. And you know what? Thomas has been spamming this in Solo Q recently. Uh, it's very meta, so yeah, it just makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, not just. Uh... I, I do like the Jinx pickup, obviously, like, great team fight. It's also, like, it simplifies lane. Usually you can get push, uh, you get your bases off, you can kind of uh, just wiggle out of that part of the game. But Varus is still up. I can see Levitate taking Varus and putting a lot of pressure onto Thomas if mm -hmm. uh, if he does want to take the Varus and just put some early pressure and kind of, like, flex his game knowledge. But also, we have, in, oh, the, this is going to be the third game for Levitate today. So both games were Zeri, right? Both games previously. Same champion, could go for that again here, and then have a B play Nautilus into it, or they could grab yeah. the Siri Nautilus, deny that for themselves. And we saw how Muzi can play that pretty well in the last game. I think there are a couple options that you could go for, and that is not what I expected. <laughs> it is Levitate's most played champion though, so it kind it is, of makes I sense. I wasn't expecting that. I mean, Kaisa Nautilus is kind of, you know, one of those really powerful duos if they can get level two, especially up against the Jinx, but just surprised to see that, especially with the Zeri priority from the previous two games. Yeah, they have a lot of options. Uh, Brahm's not bad. Also, TK, Jinx TK, pretty good against yep, Pestilence. I like that. Um, they go with the Brahm, so it's a little more offensive than the TK. Um, mm -hmm. But they, you do have to be on point because it is still quite easy for Nautilus Kaisa to bypass the Brahm shield if they do get a good engage onto the Jinx. Uh, so it's not easy, but the Brahm, if played well, that does pay off pretty heavily. Yeah, and in lane two, that the fact that Brahm is one of the best picks you can ever pick into sort of any sort of engaged champion, engaged support uh, in the laning phase does make it a little bit tougher as well for uh, Muzi and Levitate. And there is a chance that Thomas just finds those early kills with the Jinx, with the stun, uh, with the range, and just kind of snowball from there. That's now we're seeing some of these bans. A Gwen, take it away from Yuxing if he's not going to take it early. Gonna expect <laughs> that to get banned now. And then Talia. I'm also not too surprised to see that band away. We've been just seeing a lot of Talia. Azir is gone. Might as well take something strong like that that could do well into Ari off the table. Then the Byron Necton, denying that from Shocky as he already played that very well in that last game. So here, I think you just grab yourself something for Soul. I don't know if you want to go for the Nocturne this time around. Like, hmm. What, what would you kind of go here? Again, looking at a player like yeah. Soul here, Think Card, what, what are you kind of thinking? I'd slam Sin Zhao again. Uh... Uh, I mean, Kid yeah. is not bad, uh, but like I said last time, Zin Zhao with Braum into Nautilus. You just mm -hmm. engage on Nautilus, he's a free kill every time. Uh, but I like Kindred. Braum, double marksman. Now you do need this five pick to kind of pull the team comp together and have a little more uh, 
a little more frontline because you already have enough damage. Um, so five pick for a, as a tank, it doesn't feel that good, but it is still like the best option here. Yeah, yeah, Magic Guy, I see that. The, the Swain getting locked into this team comp is a bit surprising to me. I don't feel like the Straw Hats comp is that low range that Swain's gonna have a good time. Yeah, I, I do think uh, Swain against Double Marksman is not the best unless you kind of get accelerated because you can belt pretty quick. Uh, mm -hmm. That's just a Yon top. We're all just confused jungle. on this one. Yeah, Yon, I, Yon top, starter like... jungle, Swain mid. We're like trying to dissect this this draft here, and I almost feel like it's game four, and all the players are like, "I want to play. I want to play this. Doesn't matter like composition wise. It's just like I want to play this. I want to play Yone in this top lane up against Shockey. I want to play Swain here against Titan. Okay, this is this is wild. I, I kind of like it. I kind of like it. I like the vibes that I'm getting so far from Blackbeards here. Yeah, this is insane. Uh, Jinx, <laughs> if you guys saw the Saltine, at least he has a Kindred R, so you can survive. Sure, uh, yeah. But but side lanes are going to be an absolute anime fight. Yon versus Camille. <laughs> uh, Skarner coming through walls. Kindred is going to be trailing uh, Camille and Ari like, like the whole game, probably. So yep. I think side lanes are going to be pretty snowball this game. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited. I think it's, we're going to have a bloodbath in this game. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we have two kills a minute like after 15 minutes. I saw a match earlier too. Like Reason and Shocky was sort of the top lane matchup I was keeping an eye on because both these guys, well, Reason is so lane dominant anyways, and we even saw in game one he lost, but he won his lane pretty comprehensively. Yeah. Shocky can be a huge pop off player, and so I felt like this was the one. And I'm kind of glad that they did both pick Snowball Champions, who really like loser is just gonna get out of search. Uh, in this isolated matchup if junglers don't get involved. So I'm uh, very happy to see that here in the combine. I am still a bit curious though. We're seeing the Kindred being picked in Skarner. I yeah, really I don't, know. don't like that. But yeah. is there something I'm unaware of? Is this actually a good matchup for Kindred? Like, can she kite Skarner or something? Yeah, I'm not too sure. Are you, are she, I can she, she can kite at Skarner, yes. But I think that it's not a good matchup personally. Just having played yeah. enough Skarner, like I played a lot on the PBE, trust me. I, I got a lot of experience in, and I tried to make as many different roles with as many different builds. And I will say that when I saw Kindred, I was going for level four fights. Like I said, I would, I'd go Hail Blades, I'd look for her, get a kill. That's pretty much what, like, what I would do if I was Shimmer. But going into this game and looking at this draft think card. So imagine you're on the Straw Hats team. You're the coach for them. What do you tell them to do against this? Uh, which side is that, blue or red? Yeah, uh, so blue is, uh, the Blackbeard, so you're you're the coach for uh, the red team. Okay, uh, keep your double Barksman alive. If Kindred and Jinx are alive, they're gonna win the fight. Um, but you do have a lot of agency as well. Like usually when you run this composition, it's like I said, more front to back. But the fact that they have this Ari Camille means that yeah. they can look for a lot of like skirmishing like in between dragons. Um, so they actually have a pretty flexible comp. Obviously the team fighting is a little bit harder when you run Camille Ari with Jinx uh, Kindred, but you still need to just stick to your fundamentals, keep your carries alive in team fights, kite back, get Jinx to reset, and then you're going to win the fight. All right. Well, we'll see if that is going to happen here for our red team. The Straw Hats or Blackbeard are going to be able to cause enough chaos and cause enough commotion throughout the game to take this one. We're going to toss it to a break, but we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.
Hello, hello, welcome in. Wow. Sorry, we had a another little issue there with the spectator, but we, we missed are first in. blood. Yeah, we we missed first blood, and Soul got it top side too. It was a gank on to Yushin. So sadly, missing out on that one. But kind of looking at what uh, what is happening elsewhere, we're at least getting like a play in the bot lane. Ooh, Exil's impact. Oh Gra wow. uh, Grabs a B, but he does dash away with a flash. Very nicely done to escape. Yeah, but both flashes burnt away from Thomas and a B. And if Shimmer is willing to just wind right just back around it. and redo it, just go back. Go yeah. <laughs> yeah the, just go right back for it. There you go. You've got <laughs> Exil's impact. It's a fairly short cooldown. Muzi, are you going to flash for this one? That's going to be the Exil's impact. Grabbing oh! Jinx and pulling in a B2. They're trying to smash him down, and he is going to be gone. The hive has been. Shimmer! But Shimmer still got the turn a little bit too long. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, Mad Magical. I mean, it's not the level one fight that I guess you wanted to see, but hey, it basically is because we dropped in at three minutes and Thomas getting the kill there, Soul getting the kill. These are the carries getting it for the side of Straw Hats. That's exactly what they want. Who cares that a B died? Exactly. You're, you're okay with that. Your Jinx now has some gold. Kindred has some gold. You're very happy with this. I mean, of course, it's not going to be massive leads here, right? Especially when you look at the CS. But the fact that you have anything at all, Especially for this uh, solo queue uh, bot lane for Thomas. I, I'm obviously going to yeah. keep my eyes on them and how they play ball. You should try to fight against Shocky oh. in the top lane and really struggling here. Had to flash oh. their spec flash there, knowing that Shocky would have dove that if you hadn't. Oh, this gang's kind of awkward too because. Yeah. Pop the ghost too. You should get in here. Tactical sweep. Does heal up. Oh! But that's what I was talking about. Yep. You're going to die in a trade of one for one, but Shocky is going to be the real MVP in that top lane. Yeah, Rishin literally just couldn't. Th that's why I said like that. That guy's gonna be really awkward because sure you traded one for one, but Rishin getting a wave kind of shoved in in his face. Okay, thankfully it doesn't like actually crash into his turret. Uh, that kill was enough. But Shocky is now up a kill. Anasis yep. coming back in yep. with a sheen. This is not yep. easier for Rishin anytime soon. Not until you get two items. <laughs> not until you get two items. But then also Camille's gonna be at two items. Yeah, so, <laughs> and she's no gonna get there what... first. Yeah, it's like no matter what, you're kind of you're kind of just SOL in this uh, top lane <laughs> if you are using like you're you're trying to ego the top lane against uh, Shocky, but Shocky's like, all right, fine, I'll just play Camille, and now I'm already one one oh. one. I'm doing great. Is did, did Soul get that? Yeah, Soul did. just strolled in and smited it. <laughs> oh, he did. Okay. What? Oh, and it, oh, and it was the stack too. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It was that's... the mark. Straw Hats right now are getting everything they want. The only place which is kind of not necessarily going fully in their favor is this bot lane where Levitate and Muzi are still pressuring up. They still have a CS advantage. A kill is worth, what, something like 14 to 16 minutes, I think, in terms of gold. So the gold is still slightly favoring Levitate, but the CS, the experience, I think, is really important in this bot lane. Well, it actually is still favoring Levitate right now as we oh. see level 4 to level 5. Yeah, Soul, though, has put the mark on a Shimmer. And they're calling down the mid lane. Titan will yeah. be nearby. It does seem that they're actually going to rescind the play. Or are they? Because Shimmer is staying oh. nearby. Pulls up the rock with the Shattered Earth. But they got a lot of damage to be the same. He's still alive! Barely. Will they finally fall as they get the dash away? But here's Devin Air. Tries to pull him back in. But they've already lost out into the flash from Levitate to try to survive. The flash in from Titan to make He's sure there is no escape. And Devin Air. You'll be the next one if they can land anything. But the pull there on Thomas will keep Devin Air barely alive. And, you know, sometimes we jokingly call Swain Ultimate the big suck. That was not the big suck. That was a little suck. Debonair did no damage, unfortunately. You're on just level 6. You don't have the AP items. And sure, you stayed alive. And even even Debonair staying alive was kind of risky. Like, I honestly thought Short Hats could just kill him. Yeah, I kind of thought that for a second, too. But I actually like the call a bit better from Titan. Just going for the kill yep, on the Levitate. Right remove through. him from the la uh, lane. Gets Thomas back into the lane where we were talking about how he's a little bit down in CS. Well, now he's got three kills. Back even in CS. Though Maddie have overextended a little bit much. Oh, a B. From a B to make sure that Muzi just couldn't do anything. So Thomas should get a fourth kill in this bot oh lane. Oh my goodness. This, this bot lane feels so over. Not magical. And oh, it's, what? It's not just, it doesn't feel so over. It is so over. Fair enough. And what an introduction to Thomas. We said this is a guy we've never seen before. Shocky up top. 
Oh, but the ultimatum from Shockey followed you, Shin. No, he tried to get away. His own fate was sealed there. Soul guiding back away from Shimmer, who picks up the rock. Upheaval tossed in oh. the minion, helps get the kill. Well, Shimmer might actually want to continue this one. Has Impale if he wants to pull back in. Shockey with Debonair there, too. Never move, never more for Shockey. Shut down by Debonair. Shimmer is popping off right now, man. Magic. He's triaging left and right, trying to salvage these lanes. And as good as it is for Shimmer, this is not good for the Blackbeards in general right now. Their carries are dying. And mm -hmm. Shimmer, I don't think is going to go some sort of like full damage build. So he's not going to be able to necessarily leverage all this gold that he's getting that well. I mean, yeah, there is one uh, silver lining here for Yushin. You know what that is? Okay. The zero ten power spike for Yone. <laughs> you're, you're getting there. You're you're thirty percent of the way there. <laughs> you know what, Magical? I, I don't think he's gonna get zero ten. <laughs> you don't think so? No. He, here's here's the ironic part. I think Yusin is too good to go zero ten. You know, I think he'll pick fair. up a kill at some point. <laughs> that is that is fair. Oh, that or. Maybe they just go for the the full damage build here on Shimmer and just be like, all right, Shimmer, you're gonna carry. You're you're gonna be the actual one doing the damage, and then have you should just be like, all right, now I'm building tank. Hey, you're the one who cooks. Magical. Yeah. So is there is there a carry Skarna build somewhere? I played Lethality Skarna. Yes. Does it work? Yes, actually. It's actually it's kind of nuts. The only thing is you never want to ult. Okay. Okay. Like okay, well, you you will literally. I, like again, Halo Blades, OP on Skarner. Just gonna tell everybody that it's it is the the keystone to go for him. But you it's get go with not Halo, Halo Blades. Blades though. Trust me, it, it's actually really good on Skarner. Yeah, it, but it's, Shimmer didn't do it. I know he didn't do it, but I'm just saying, do it and then go Lethality and just watch someone die in literally half a second from Skarner and they go, wait, what? <laughs> well, you know what, Shimmer, may, maybe there's a chance you can do that. You'd have to do it twice because there is Soul and there is. Thomas, multiple members here who no, he uh, can't carry he doesn't these have Hail Blades. You have to have Hail Blades for it. Like, it, is, it is required. As, yeah, Shimmer kind of just a little bit late to the dragon. Good call here from the Straw Hats. Yeah, at least getting get a little bit back, really capitalizing on this bot lane, being so far ahead. And I want to kind of, you know, hold my uh, praise on Thomas until we see some team fights, because that's going to be the big thing. He's 4-0 right now in this bot lane. But is really struggling to at least keep up this CS and keep up the pressure here against Levitate. And Levitate has always been this player that we always uh, praise for how he pilots team fights, not necessarily his lane phase. And so that's really when I'm going to know whether or not Thomas is going to be uh, the solo queue god that comes into a combine and just absolutely terrorizes. Yeah, that's true. I mean, if you think back to game one, where Levitate played against Sushi, they lost the lane rather comprehensively. But even then, Levitate was still able to equalize things. Ooh. Shimmer, Gank, and Top. I like that from Shockey though. Wow. He was able to get the hook shot on Shimmer, and that's gonna be the end. Oh! Away. No shot. Beautifully done. They do trade back with one. No, no down two. two. Wow, Shockey, you just outplaying them all. And our dreams are ruined, Matt Magical. No O10 power spike for Eason. That's his first kill picked up. It's gonna ruin that. But Shockey is a beast wow. right now on the top side. It's kind of crazy too because Eason's actually winning out. The trades in terms of the, the, the CS, he's able to mm -hmm. push Shockey off the wave quite a few times, but Shockey doesn't care about the waves. He's farming recent. Mm -hmm. He's just going, all right, give me more kills, give me more gold. Yeah. So even though he's down 15 CS, he's up, even if it's only 100 gold. He'll take that as Camille. Having any lead as we go into the mid lane is going to be oh the Demonic goodness. Ascension pop, but with the charm and no damage to really follow up, even if you have Malignance, it's not nearly enough. So nice, nice capitalization here for our Straw Hats. Yeah, and I love that Soul has now ganked back to back. Still, wait a minute. Lamb's respite. Uh, Thomas might oh, have actually got sure. himself caught out here. And this is yep. what we're talking about. Flashing away, trying to kite back towards a B, but he's slowed down by upheaval with the ignite ticking on his head. Getting a little bit of damage, but nobody actually oh, gets on no top way. of him. He barely is going to be able to escape. Or is he dodging away from the rock? B! B is the next target. Will die to the Scorpion King. Okay, you know what? Thomas is having such a good game, but a lot of it's coming from a B. Huge a props to this huge, problem. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like every time he's died, it's to protect his AD carry, pretty much. And he is doing the best he can. Like, Thomas was dead to rights. He should have he been able have to He should have died. There's no reason that he shouldn't die except for a B. That was so well played. And you definitely trade your life like that if you're this Braum. I, I agree. Absolutely amazing support play.
Yeah, this is this is absolutely insane. And unfortunately for Blackbeard right now, they're losing all three lanes. We just saw top die, we just saw mid die, and bot side you got one kill when it should really have been more, and it wasn't even the critical AD carry. It wasn't even the Jinx. Thomas is still four. Oh, and two. Deathless. Top side, Soul and Shocky taking advantage of the pressure and gonna pick up all three Void Grubs of the second set for themselves. Uh, what is it again? Uh, do, 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 and a do. Yeah, yeah. That's the second set there. So get, get themselves <laughs> that. So evening up the Void Grubs. So no real advantage for either team on that one, which is perfectly fine. But Shimmer really is paying so much attention into the spot lane, understanding that hitting that rookie is gonna be big. But Night Dodge again from a B. This goes for the stand beside me. And every time that Shimmer tries to go into the spot lane, it just feels like it's just not enough that it's great calls and great apprehension and defensiveness from the Straw Hat spot lane. Yeah, and there's literally nothing Shimmer can do, unfortunately, right? Like, we've seen how yeah. effective his ganks were to the top side. If you gank mid lane, you blow an Ari ultimate or a yep. flash, pretty much. But bot side, I'll be just hop skips jumps away right? and he's gonna put his body in danger to soak that initially yeah. because he can get out and that's what's gonna stop thomas from ever dying on uh, shimmer might lose out on the blue buff could spite it away does secure it okay so no steal there from soul and doesn't get that stack <laughs> how many stacks does soul have already i feel like he's got at least three has he already i hit think four? he's at three he's at five five that happen? He is so accelerated. And th this just places my fears for Swain, right? Like, before you start, you know, hitting that four stack and getting range on the Kindred, sure, maybe you can say Swain, you know, you can punish everybody except for maybe Thomas range-wise and maybe Titan, but you're not too worried about him. But as the game goes on, as Soul's range increases, the amount of people who's going to worry about that Demonic Ascension is going to decrease. And mm -hmm. for Straw Hats, because of Double Marksman, they can play front to back. They can yeah. just kind of stay away from the Swain, whereas it's the Blackbeards who have to find ways to get in there. Kaisa is very, very short range. He's meant to be more of an assassin, really, than a, a regular crit-style front-to-back marksman. Mm -hmm. Though I will say, I kind of like that the, they do have that Kaisa when you look at the rest of the composition for Blackbeards, right? Yone, yeah. Skarner, even Swain, they all want to be the thick of the battle. So yep. The fact that they're all looking to dive and Levitate can follow suit onto Thomas, that's why I want to really look at how these team fights are going to play. I want to see how Thomas and a B are when the rest of the team is nearby. That is one of the nice things about having Soul doing so well here on Kindred. Not just for the Lambs or Spite, but also having the five stacks here, that additional range you were just talking about there, RMC, is really going to help them out when it comes to these fights of hiding it back a little bit more so that even with that engage, you're just not getting there in time and you're already taking so much damage just to get to Thomas. Drake picked up by Straw Hats and Magical. I'll tell you what I want to see. I want to see Blackbeards find something. Because <laughs> right now, Shiver goes top, gets outplayed by Shock. Like You get the gank. Shocky finds the kill. You gank mid, you're not able to find anything. Bot side, again, we've talked about that. So, the Levitate, hey, Levitate's doing a great job, right? Like, I want to see that Kaisa start to find things. But I guess we have to wait for the turrets to fall. Because if not, I don't think Levitate's actually going to be unlocked into the rest of the map. Yeah, that is going to be kind of crucial here, is when do you actually find these plays? When are you going to be successful? Because if you're not, then the scaling continues to... Follow up for the rest of Straw Hats. You get second item for Soul, second item for Thomas. Shocky has already got that Trinity Force completed. And we already talked about, like, yeah, Yone going to be good when he gets his second item, but Shocky's going to be just as strong. So that's why you have to look for this play around the Rift Herald. But the snipe away! Thomas gets it with the rocket, even if they lost out on oh Ori. Seven Air was able to get the kill on a B, and the rest of them follow on to Shimmer with the Impale locking down <laughs> one. But Thomas does not care. Straw Hats, beautiful fight. Yeah, and Straw Hats, they were baiting. Yes, Titan goes down, but Titan knew his job, which was not necessary to survive, but to do the damage. Straw Hats didn't pick up the Herald. I uh, I don't think it matters. Honestly, I don't I don't care if they, they denied <laughs> Dude, the right, Herald. You know that was going to be, right. that was, should have been Blackbeards, 100%. And then they win the fight afterwards. That is so much more important, so much more impactful for them. Another kill over to Thomas, another kill, another stack over to Soul. I'll, you take these. These are huge wins for Straw Hats. And when we were talking about these two item spikes, having Straw Hats, the ones that are likely to hit those power spikes first, oh. I, I don't know what Blackbeards can do at this point. Yeah. Well, you know what, Magical? We, we were questioning about Thomas, right? Because we're saying a B did a lot more. Code up, Shocky. Shocky, though, just hook shots away. And Not even though close. they pick up the rock, they just can't get close. Shocky's just completely out. Yeah, okay. I don't even why I stopped my sentence right there. <laughs> so Thomas, we said in lane, you know, he was benefiting a lot from a B. Uh, he benefited from so, some early pressure as well. Uh, but that steal, is that enough to convince you about Thomas right now, Magical? That Harold steal? I, I mean, a steal's a steal, right? Like, 
Yeah, that's anybody, an Eddie Carey anybody steal. Can do, anybody can do that, right? <laughs> I want to see a team fight. I want to see a full team fight from Thomas. Then I'll be convinced. I, I, that was a team fight. He got killed. No, 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 no. That that was a skirmish. I want to see a front to back oh. team fight. But Shocky right now, people? he's about to get dove. He tries to get away, but the pull back in, even if he had the ultimatum, he doesn't even want to burn it. He knew that he was going to die. Sadly, he did burn the flash just to try to create a little bit of distance. But guess what? Four members are top lane. What's happening in mid lane? You got everyone here from Straw Hats just capitalizing oh, on that. Looking for Debonair as well. Even if he bought the Demonic Ascension, he had to flash away. And they can follow that up for the kill. Because Yushin, too late to defend that turret. Now you're in a bad spot and you're forced to fight. Oh, that's There's flashing flash Thomas. Missing. That's a beautiful flash. But Thomas getting oh, pulled back in a little bit overextending. But the leaders <gasps> fight to keep him alive. Soul. Soul. Keep it on. But the impale. Shamar pulls him right off. Says, no way you're living this one i think that's the first time all night we've actually seen the impale ruin the lamb's respite oh oh levitate. wait levitate. this is looking for it but soul oh. will trade one for one to make sure that titan gets out of there but black bears that actually ended up working out well for them it might have been a chaos shimmer? and then shimmer stopping the recall ah. and can't get away and just like that match goal, the game is pulled almost even a thousand gold separates the teams after a dominant start from the side of the Straw Hats and Blackbeards, they are not giving this up without a fight. We were joking about Shimmer carry, but Shimmer is actually kind of carrying Loki. Yeah, I honestly, six and four right now on <laughs> the Skarner, looking pretty good. And that, like you said, we finally got to see what happens when you have the Impale and the Lands Respite at the same time. Pull them right off of there. Say, nope, you're not healing up. You're not surviving. And honestly, that's what I want to see more of. That's why I yep. didn't like the picking Kindred here against Skarner is purely for that reason. Yeah, no, that that's completely fair. And hey, if you can continuously do that, uh, huge for you. Thomas did a great flash to avoid Rishin initially, but there was just way too much CC. And Muzi finds a critical hook into the depth charge, which set Thomas up into such a mm -hmm. tough position. And I think for Straw Hats, they were getting a little bit hypey. You know, yes, they mm -hmm. were very, very hit. They were taking some risks. Now you gotta slow it down. And now match goes when I agree with you. And I wanna see if Thomas can play a proper front to back fight when the odds are even, when the gold's even, and mm. when you're not so pumped up on adrenaline and pushed so far up. Yeah, and we actually gotta see Levitate finally a part of a fight too. Like, yeah, true. The la that's why I didn't really consider the previous fight anything, because Levitate was the in bot lane the whole time. He had been pushing in the previous fight, so that fight actually shows up, and we saw how much more even. It is between the two teams and how chaotic things can get really quickly. And speaking of chaotic, okay, a 20 minute spawn of Baron. It's spotted out by the vision of the Empire, but everyone was looking for the dragon here of Blackbeards. Oh, they are going to peel back though. They're not confident enough that they can burst it down. Yeah, and I don't think you can be against the Kaisa. If that Void Seeker hits on a low health target, yeah. that's going to immediately be an execute. And there's not really that much tank on the side of Straw Hats to go for this. Oh, wait a minute though, minute levitate. Baron. You're in a bad spot. The rest of the team was peeling back. A Shimmer might be able to get over the wall, but that's going to be the face on deal. A little bit too late to save Levitate. Instead, they're trying to get a little bit of damage on his soul. The fact that Yushin took so much, and then Shocky out of nowhere. RKO's in the Shock charm onto Scorpion King, and they are going to oh, capitalize no. even with that Impale under three. Not getting away from that double kill. Debonair is still being hunted by Shocky here. Shocky don't care, and the Baron start that Straw Hat started, they just go right back to it, because this time, this time, there's no Kaiser yeah. risk. There's no Shimmer wait, steal. Wait, Soul though is taking the the mark on that matter. red buff. Okay, he's yeah, just gonna go for matter. yeah. He's going yeah, for he's dragon. Gonna, he's gonna get everything. I thought maybe. Okay, come on. Oh, the Vision of Empire is <laughs> too early. If the Vision of Empire was a little bit later, there is a possibility it got stolen. <laughs> We've seen a lot of strange things tonight, Magical. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This this is the thing with combines is sometimes you can see some wild things, can't you? Yeah, and if Vision of Empire somehow steals that, that's completely on Straw Hats. They they deserve to lose that Baron, but they don't because they're not that sort of player. And at the end of the day, not only do they get Baron, they're at Soul Point. They won that last fight as well. It still feels like the game is firmly in the Straw Hats' hands. But you know, things can change so quickly when you play chaotically. When you're constantly sure. coin flipping, it looks like Blackbeards are ready to coin flip in the spot lane. Chalky has been... Went out pretty handedly in the 1v2s, but we already saw the 1v3 not work so well. That's why they get the TP here. 
But it's going to be a TP answer. Oh. Looking for the pull on a Muzi. Insta burst. First, he comes down. Even if you pulled him back in, didn't really help out. Shimbo's too late. The rest of the team now collapsing. Yeah, the time are the ones on the hunt again. They're going to get too soon to get away. But is he actually going to escape with the Fate Seal? It doesn't help out because they already got the ultimate and oh, the kill on the Debonair. With Shimmer and Levitate locked underneath the turret. Locking down with the slows from Zabs. Making sure that Levitate tries to get away. But the hook shot follow up. Levitate's and then they put down everything. the Fissure just so you can't get out of it. A full clean ace for the straw hats. I feel so bad for Levitate. He dodged everything, and then Brom just tagged you the an auto attack, and that's kind of done with it. Fed Jinx excited with Baron Buff pushing in right now. Oh, I, I think I, just that's gonna what end. I'm wondering. Yeah, well, 15 okay. seconds, 10 seconds until Yushin's up. They have Muzi here. Muzi, you, you might have to throw your life at this one to make sure that Debonair and Yushin can get up. But they are already sieging these Nexus turrets. One's gone. You gotta get in there. Yushin realizes no that you do the flash away from B, but it's gonna be the game. Shaw has one good what? team fight and they win. <laughs> what on earth right now, my magic? I'm, I'm just in shock and in awe. It feels like this was the fastest game we got. Our last yes. game of the night. It was out of nowhere. Like, I think about this. There was... 38 kills in that game. 38 yeah. kills in that game. 23 and a half minutes. I said it was going to be a bloody game. I wasn't quite right with the two kills a minute, but I was close. You know what? If the game had gone longer, I think we'd actually have hit there. Because we have to keep in mind, too, like, the early skirmishes is only one or two kills. It's the later fights where you get, like, nine, ten people did by the end of it. And it's insane because both teams fought that incredibly hard, right? Like, we, we saw the early lead that Straw Hats got. And the fact that the Blackbeards even punched back in the mid-game was actually quite shocking to me. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just insane to watch. And to me, it's Shockey and Soul were, were the guys who just absolutely popped off from Straw Hats. So that felt like they generated a lot of those leads. Um, yes, a B also did incredibly well, but like Soul's Lamb's respite towards the end were so clutch as well. Yeah, hold on. I just want to figure out one thing really quick. I'm just type in something there. Okay, yeah. but yeah, I mean, it was honestly just... A crazy game, and I will say from Thomas, I am impressed. There was only one like hiccup. I re would really say there's that fight in mid lane where I think they stepped that a little bit too far, and it forced the rest of the team to use the lambs or spite, and then the and pale that pulled them off of it. But outside of that, Thomas did definitely impress me. First game that we got to see of them, and looking pretty good. If you're doing some like you're playing like that coming straight from solo queue, you got a lot of potential. Yeah. To be fair, yeah, I mean, he positioned well in a lot of those later team fights as well. There was just that one sort of misplay we saw in that mid lane that year called out. And uh, for the side of the Blackbeards, this game, I feel kind of bad for Levitate. I feel like first game and this game weren't his wheelhouse, right? Like, Levitate wants a bit more of a stable early game, yeah. and we didn't get that. And he had to join the Chaos. When he did join the Chaos, he still had a lot of impact. Uh, it just kind of wasn't enough. And unfortunately for Reason, this is one of the few rare times we saw him lose lane. And let's be honest, he kind of got rolled by Shockey. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, also, we didn't get to see the first kill, right? And that is kind of important that it could have been a straight up 1v1 duel that you shouldn't thought they had. And then all of a sudden, you just have have a soul right there yeah. and be like, nope, I, I'm camping you. I'm making but sure you know. that's ahead. Yeah, it's you, your well, former jungler. <laughs> but, well, that's why I was saying it's like, it, yeah. how how does it work, right? Does you shouldn't have the confidence to go up against soul knowing that soul is going to know your own playbook or is soul going to be like, all right, I know him so well. I know what he's going to go for. Even if he th knows I'm going to be in the top lane, we could still kill him. Yeah, a uh, bit unfortunate, but we did get to see mechanics all around. So I think, you know, not not a complete wash for the side of Blackbeards. Uh, and th this is ultimately a scouting combine. Win or lose is actually far less important right. than how the players perform in the situations mm. and the roles that given. If you're given a bad draft, if you can still pull it off, good for you. I think back to, was it game two, uh, where Ridside was set so far behind, um, mm. and yet Shimmer and Titan still managed to find the critical picks at the critical moment. Uh, yeah, to me, that's what scouting combat's about, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, that game's also a little hard to dissect, too, because I know a lot of teams, they'll play that kind of game, and after, like, the first 10 minutes, it'll be like, okay, FF, let's go to the next scrim, right? <laughs> <laughs> These but, are you know, scrims! <laughs> I, I'm just saying, sometimes with scrims like that kind of game, you're like, mm -hmm. all right, this is going to be too chaotic. We're not really going to learn anything from this one. I mean, we did get to learn at least the players, are willing to throw hands, which I respect. I love that. And I, I do believe that we are getting Think Card back in. So let's get Think Card's uh, thoughts on that wild game four. So what were your thoughts going into that game? We finally saw the Skarner pulling people out of the Kindred Ultimate. Yes. Um, yes. So we finally saw the interaction. Uh, but I thought that uh, Shocker, Shocky, Shocky. Played, Shocky played really well. He yeah, uh, yeah. got a lot of pressure with the Camille. You're always going to get that little 
uh, dip and spike uh, once Yon gets an alt and you don't have an alt, so you're going to give pressure. But then he was able to scale into the game, find a lot of windows. Uh, so I was pretty impressed with uh, the Camille that game. Yeah, 100%, yeah especially with the pressure that got put down too. Like Shimmer was living up there at first. Like, sure, Shimmer eventually swapped to the bot side, but the first, like, what, three, four ganks were all top side for sure. Uh, it was definitely, so I, definitely a banger. Yeah, yeah. And then I kind of want to get your opinion. Of, like, obviously, it's only one game. And we have, like, Thomas is probably the player we have the least amount of info on, being a player that it, it yeah. was pulled for solo queue. And we were kind of talking about, like, how do they scale up? How do they look? So what are your thoughts on seeing this this first game out of them? Yeah, I mean, it kind of, to me, that was like watching Danny on EG. You pick him Jinx. And he got some kills in the early game, but then just popped the hell off. Uh, they, they communicated quite well around their lanes too. So even when their wave was not in a very good spot, they were like, okay, we need a little bit of hover to crash this wave. So they did have that back and forth uh, with Soul, which was nice, nice to hear. Um, and then when you get a few kills and you have Jinx and you have Braum, it's up to you to position well in team fights, which he did almost every single team fight except maybe one. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, so now that we've ended our first day, I, I want to get your like standout players. If you have like three standout players that you, you would pick out of uh, the four games that we saw today, what would be those three? I think so. So good for sure. Yeah. He. Mm -hmm. He's loud, so he Agreed. dominates comms a little bit, a little bit. But uh, he was quite good, and he had an idea of what he wanted to do. Um, Cryogen, I still think, was great support, great support yeah. play Agreed. in some of his games. Uh, so I do want to give him a shout out. And then I do think we have a lot of talented ADC team fighters, yeah. which is yeah. very good to see because that's the entire role. You kind of need to get resources, and then you need to position well in team fights. And I don't really have that many complaints about any of the ADCs positioning in team fights, which is which is incredibly nice to see, to be honest. Agreed. I I think that uh, I'm all I I'm a little bit more surprised with how stacked the ADCs were going to be. I thought that it was going to be like two that really stood out, but all four of them were insane. Every yeah. every last one of them was absolutely incredible. But I got to say, I, we saw a lot of good players today. Like, fr pretty much from top to bottom, everyone played really well. Definitely excited to see what kind of games we have for tomorrow. So. Think Guard, thank you for joining us today. It was a lot of fun being here for the Supernova Combine. The worst generation. Definitely looking like they're going to be the best generation with all this talent that we have here. But we'll be back tomorrow. At least I'll be back for the first two games. Random Caster Minion will be back in... Oh, I did it. I did it. I, I did it. <laughs>